Hi, I'm Pam, and I'm here to talk about video games. It's been a while, but I've got some new recommendations of games that I think you should check out on Game Pass. If you don't already know, Game Pass is a monthly subscription service that gives you access to a large library of games. New ones are added all the time, and some old ones are taken off. Here are seven games that I've played that I think are worth taking a look at. They can all be played on either your Xbox or PC and are available as of March 2024. Just recently added, Control is an incredible supernatural action game by Remedy. You play Jessie Faden, who has come to a place called the Oldest House in hopes of finding her brother, who disappeared under mysterious circumstances. This place houses the Bureau of Control, which investigates paranatural phenomena. This is an incredible location, and it's been taken over by a hostile entity from another dimension called the Hiss. This causes the building to shift and move, changing its structure, while ominous whispers are all around you. Jessie is given incredible powers like telekinesis and levitation, which will help you in gunfights that take place around the building. As you explore, you learn all about what's going on here, through files and videotapes and even an incredibly creepy kids show. The little lore items spread around are some of my favorite parts. There are even references to Alan Wake, and the game includes a DLC dedicated to him, which I still need to play. Control is weird and wonderful, helps build out the Remedyverse, and has some great surreal action scenes set to the perfect music. Control will take you at least 12 hours for a basic run-through, though there's a lot of side content to explore. If you're looking for something brief but full of charm, try Toem. This is a combination of photography, puzzles, and Where's Waldo? You set out on an adventure to photograph the Toem phenomenon. Along the way, you'll visit different environments like forests, cities, and mountains, and be tasked with photographing different things. You'll be finding any wildlife in each area, along with getting tasks from other characters that can be a bit puzzling. You need to interpret what they're asking of you and where you can find it to take a snapshot. All the while, you'll be adding to your book of photos, trying to find the pictures that fulfill people's requests, as well as snapping anything else you find interesting. Everything about this game is so relaxing, joyful, and charming. It has a chill soundtrack, and the black and white visuals are very cute. I had a hard time putting this one down once I started and ended up completing everything it had in store for me. Toem is a quick and lovely romp that will take you about 3-4 to four hours. If you're looking for a fun metroidvania, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night by Artplay is a great one to try. This is a spiritual successor to the Castlevania series. It captures the great atmosphere and music of Symphony of the Night, and the collection options and ability variety of the later GBA games. The protagonist Miriam is a shard binder. As she defeats enemies, she can absorb the demonic shards they leave behind, giving her access to a wide range of abilities, like summoning demons and familiars or casting directional spells. You also get a variety of weapons to choose from. The most satisfying thing is exploration and finding everything the game has to offer. Adding each shard to your spellbook feels good, and the map is excellent to explore and systematically fill out. The combination of different art styles is a bit strange, but easy enough to overlook, and the castle is filled with interesting enemies and even the ability to alter your appearance. Bloodstained will take around 15 hours if you want to see the end of the game, but a bunch more if you want to 100% it. If you're looking for something to play with friends, Recent Edition Played Up can serve up fun with a side of stress. Played Up lets you and up to three friends plan, set up, and run a restaurant. In the beginning, you'll need to choose a layout for the place and a dish to serve. Then you can set everything up, choosing where to put the counters, dinner tables, ovens, and other appliances. Once you're ready to go, you need to seat and serve your customers, and they are some picky people. Make one person wait too long or fail to serve them what they want, and your run will be over. But if you succeed at a day's service, you get new items and effects to choose. As you level up, you'll gain access to new restaurants and recipes. This game requires a lot of communication and coordination. While the game initially seemed impossible, 
my friends and I improved each time we played, learning to better distribute tasks and which recipes were more likely to lead to success. This is a game you can get as many hours out of as you want. It took my group about seven or eight to succeed in getting a five-star restaurant, but things don't have to end there. Do you like adventure games? There are a lot of LucasArts classics on Game Pass, and today I want to recommend Day of the Tentacle. In this follow-up to Maniac Mansion, a cast of three characters is trying to save the world from the machinations of the evil purple tentacle. Each of the three protagonists ends up at a different point in time. One in the present, one 200 years in the past, and another 200 years in the future, after Purple Tentacle has enslaved the world. They need to work together, sending objects through time and making changes in the past that impact later times. Though there are a couple puzzles I consider moon logic, for the most part they are really fun and creative. The writing and scenarios in the game are really amusing, as you'd expect from a game by Tim Schafer and Dave Grossman. This is a weird and wacky time that's sure to satisfy the desire to play an old-school point-and-click adventure. Day of the Tentacle will take around 6 to 8 hours to complete. Have you ever wanted to be a shark? Tripwire Interactive's Man Eater is a shark PG. You start out as a baby bull shark. As you eat and grow, you'll get new abilities from a talent tree and take on increasingly dangerous foes. This is an incredibly silly game, with a silly revenge story, and is narrated by Chris Parnell in reality TV fashion. But there's something really nice about just swimming through the ocean and enjoying the local wildlife. By eating it. As you grow, you can take on beachgoers and boaters and face off against a challenging lineup of shark hunters. You need to make your way through a whole bunch of them before you can finally face your nemesis, the one who killed your mother. There are quests to do and collectibles to find, and you can tailor your shark to be electric, bone armored, or even more stealthy. I had a lot of fun with this game, exploring the open ocean. Everything is bright and colorful and nice to look at. This is an amusing way to spend 8 to 12 hours. I love rock climbing, and when it's done in game, it's often a strange, frictionless experience. Push the stick up, press A to jump. It's like 2D platforming, except vertical. But you saw is a game that lets climbing be interesting, and even a bit of a puzzle. It requires thought and planning in order to keep pushing forward. You play an unnamed character, and your goal is to climb an impossibly tall tower. There's some backstory tucked away in notes, but for the most part, you just climb. The control scheme here is really neat, allowing you to choose which handheld to reach for with the left stick and reach for it with the left or right trigger. You can place pitons as you climb, allowing you a kind of checkpoint in case you take a fall. You have to manage your stamina and shake out your forearms when they get pumped. New mechanics are introduced frequently to keep things fresh. A ways in and you'll be able to make plant blooms or hang on to moving critters to help your ascent. Later, you'll have to deal with wind or turn to your little blob companion to impact the environment around you. Along the way, there are secrets to find and many beautiful sights to behold. Jusant is a really lovely game and provides a relaxing, almost meditative experience. It's around five hours long. So those are seven games I think you should check out on Game Pass. There's a selection of great action, puzzles, cooperative coordination, and some relaxing experiences. Hopefully you found something that interests you here. Until next time! If you want to see more, check out my full review of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, or another of my videos. I have a Patreon if you want to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.